Welcome everyone to the college fair tonight. Tonight we have Clarkson University in the house and all of the information that you wanna know about for Clarkson University will be right here. As a reminder, a couple of important housekeeping items, your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. If you have a question, please use the Q&A button on your screen to type your question uh, to the presenters at any time. And just a reminder, this is one of many different sessions happening tonight and at other times. So be sure to check back often on the schedule on the website at strivescan.com. And this presentation is being recorded and it will be available at strivescan.com uh, backslash Clarkson at uh, Strivescan in about a week. And I'll drop that in the chat for you to see there as well. All right. With that, I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, first and only presenter tonight, Catherine from Clarkson University. Take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm Catherine Cadamon. I am one of the admissions counselors at Clarkson. Um, I'm actually the admissions counselor for Central New York. Um, so if I look familiar, that's why. Um, but I can also work with any students from any other places. Um, it just, you know, who we're assigned to. Uh, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about Clarkson. If you guys have questions, feel free to reach out to me and I'll drop my email in the chat box. Um, but yeah, you can also default to admissions at clarkson.edu as well. Um, so let me just get my screen ready. All right, hopefully everyone can see that. So thank you again for joining us tonight. All right, so just a little bit of information about Clarkson. So we are located in the town of Potsdam um, in New York. We are about, just to kind of um, give you an idea, we are about 30 minutes from the Canadian border. So we are uh, south of the Canadian border. We're about an hour from the Adirondack Park. Um, we definitely utilize where we are. We are very outdoorsy. We are a very active campus. Um, our campus itself is on over 600 acres of land. So we have cross country skiing um, trails. We have snowshoeing trails which also double as mountain biking course. Um, and we're right on the Racket River. So if you want to canoe, kayak, um, just go for a swim. It's really nice. Um, you can kind of see, actually, I'll go back. Um, so that's our campus. And we're, like I said, right on the water. It's beautiful. And right now, this is exactly what it looks like because uh, it is fall up here, almost close to peak season. Um, and we are one of four colleges. Um, so you can see we're about 32 to 3,300 undergraduate students. So it's a nice small class, um, or excuse me, nice small uh, school. Class sizes average about 25 to 35 students in a classroom. A um, couple of lecture halls, but those are pretty small too. After that, um, definitely really small. Uh, senior year, you might have some classes that are only eight students in a capstone class, which is really nice. You really get to know um, the faculty and the staff on campus and also your peers on the other students. Uh, student to professor ratio is about 10 to one. That actually just dropped down from 11 to one. So that's awesome. We hired some new professors. Um, and then, like I said, we are one of four colleges. So we are uh, within about 10 minutes. Um, so it is SUNY Potsdam, SUNY Canton, St. Lawrence University and ourselves. So within 10 minutes, there's about 13 to 15,000 students in the area. Um, it makes it really nice because the campus itself, you get that small intimate feeling, um, really get to know everyone, definitely a tight knit community, but then socially, if you wanted to branch out, um, we have so many students and it makes for a really eclectic um, area. So. I really enjoyed it. I also went to college um, in the town. All right. Um, so here are some of our majors, and by some, I mean all of our majors on campus. Um, so really, you can take a look at those. They're also on our website. I know this is overwhelming, but it's our majors, our minors, our concentrations. Um, we have our pre-professional programs as well. Um, so that is really nice um, to kind of see everything that's going on. Also, we're very interdisciplinary. Um, so maybe you are a student who is um, an engineering student, but you also want to take some business classes. That's totally an option. Um, really, everything's an option. We're going to work with you so that you can take all of the classes that you enjoy um, and so that you find like a path that you um, really want to go down. Um, and it's okay to be undecided as well. Speaking of which, we have um, our studies programs. So we have within our each school, um, a program for students who, 
You know what school you want to be under at Clarkson, but you're not exactly sure what you want to declare as your major. And that's totally fine. Like I said, um, back here, we have a lot of majors on campus. Um, probably our most popular school on campus um, we're about 50% engineering, but we have a lot of other strong majors outside of that as well. Um, but engineering is pretty popular on campus, I would say. Um, so business studies, engineering studies, liberal studies, science studies, and university studies. Um, so like I said, that is saying, you know, I really want to be an engineering student, but I'm not sure what I want to declare. That gives you a lot of time. You actually have till the end of your sophomore year to declare a major. Most students, however, after their first semester, because of the studies program, they're able to commit to a major right after that. Um, but there's also no rush. Uh, you will have an assigned advisor um, within whatever program you go into. So if you are a civil engineer or a physics student, um, you'll have an advisor, academic advisor, um, that would be working with you for all four years. Um, they are professional. They've taken great training. Um, they're just there to make sure that you are taking all the courses and on track to graduate and that you're also enjoying your major. Um, outside of the academic um, advisor, we also have mentors on campus. Uh, so I'm a mentor. I have about seven mentees. Um, so that's someone more on a personal level who is working with you to make sure that, you know, you are enjoying your time on campus, that everything with your roommate is going well, that the town, you're really getting to know it. Um, you know, just on that personal level, someone kind of behind you being like, how's everything going? Um, and also point out resources if you need it, um, or things as simple as different locations in town, maybe where there's a great place to go for family weekend, whatever it may be. Um, that's what we're here for. I just finished up my first round of meetings, so that was great. Um, so yeah, uh, you will have an advisor and a mentor for those. Um, student life. Um, so we have a ton going on on campus. Um, so we have over 250 different clubs and organizations on campus. And I just highlighted a couple of things. Um, so we have our athletic groups. We are D3 men's and women's um, athletics. And then we are D1 men's and women's hockey. Um, we also have club and intramural sports. Those are very active. Our campus, um, I think it's something like over 80% of our student body is involved in some sort of activity um, in club or team sports. Um, so very active. Like I, going back, um, as I said, we're on 600 plus acres of land. So there's a ton um, for students to do on our campus, but we are on the foothill, excuse me, the foothills of the Adirondack Park. So if you enjoy hiking and biking and climbing and canoeing and kayaking and camping, all that great stuff, um, there's a ton going on um, just in our backyard. Uh, we have Greek life on campus. It counts for about 10% of our campus. So if it's something you're interested in, it's totally available. If it's something that you're not interested in, it's easy to avoid. Um, and then leadership opportunities. So we have a ton of professional societies for students, um, a lot of resume boosters. We have our speed teams um, on campus. So they kind of similar to what students do in high school at like a robotics level where you would compete and there's always some sort of challenge. Um, we have about 12 of those on campus. Um, and you can see up in the corner, uh, that is one of our Baja off-road racers. Um, we also have a concrete canoe. Um, we have a small plane one. We have a chemical engineering car, which runs off of chemical um, reactions, which is really cool. Um, special events. So we just had our fall fest. We had, um, Waka Flocka Flame uh, come to campus. And I can't remember who the opener was. Um, students really enjoy that. We also have a Spring Fest. Um, in the winter, we have COGO, which is Cold Out, Gold Out, which is an alumni weekend event that our current students, alumni, and also some community members get involved in. We have everything from ice sculpture contests to outdoor hockey rinks, um, to dog sledding and face painting and a bunch of food on campus. It's a lot of fun. Um, and there's usually a fireworks show too. Um, and then we have, um, screen's cutting off, um, a bunch of other uh, reading rooms and uh, EMT and kind of volunteer service as well. Professional experiences. It is required that all Clarkson students, no matter what your major, that you do at least one professional experience before you graduate. Um, so I've kind of highlighted the uh, main four that students can do. You're not limited to just one. Um, most of our students do more than one, but you have to do at least one. 
So the first um, and probably one of our more popular um, options would be a co-op, which is a full-time paid position, um, usually six months out of the year. So most students do those their junior or senior year. Um, it is, like I said, full-time paid. So when you are doing that, students are not taking classes. Um, academics are put on pause and you would pick up the following semester where you had left off. That could prolong graduation. Um, however, a lot of students, because they meet with the Career Center so early in their college career, um, they're able to kind of brace for that. Uh, either maybe they have credits from high school that transfer in and put them ahead, or maybe they're taking classes over the summer or maybe winter, or maybe they're just gonna graduate in four and a half years. You only pay for the time that you're on campus. Um, so you only pay for the eight semesters. And that's why all of our scholarships say renewable for eight semesters. Um, Co-ops, uh, well, I'll come back to that. Uh, internships, those are over the summer. They're usually paid, but we don't guarantee pay. You can start those as soon as the summer after your first year. Um, so that gives you a lot of opportunity to kind of get out there, see what you like, what you don't like. Some internships are really in depth, just as much as a co-op. Other ones are a little bit more shadow-like, um, just to see what's out there and kind of uh, dip your feet into that. Um, for co-ops and internships, our career center is great. Um, they will sit down with first year students in their first semester and kind of map out what the rest of your um, four years are gonna look like at Clarkson. This is really helpful um, for all students. Some students who are like, you know, I've always wanted to work for NASA. How do I get there? What classes do I need to take? What are they looking for in an applicant? Um, and then other students go in there and they're like, I have no idea what I want to do. I'm a business student. I don't even know what's out there. It's pretty broad. I don't even know if I love my major yet. Um, you know, they'll have you take some surveys. They'll have you speak with alumni. Our alumni network is great. They love Clarkson. They love current Clarkson students and they love to hire Clarkson students. Um, so get you in touch with that and then maybe get you some shadow hours. Um, I do like to highlight for the co-ops and internships. A lot of students don't do them local to our campus. I know a lot of students as they're driving up, they're like, so where would I go? Um, we are in a rural area. So um, the opportunities, there are opportunities, but we do like to uh, kind of get students a little bit of everywhere for those. You know, if you're a student who is from Vermont, but you always really want to live in California, we're gonna try and get you a professional experience out there. Um, we have a great network and we are not limited to, you know, who we've worked with in the past. We're always open to um, networking with new companies, networking with new um, organizations and so on. Um, and then, oh, we also have up in the top corner, you can kind of see, um, we have two career fairs a year. Uh, our first one just got done, I believe last week. Um, we usually have over 200 um, to 250 different companies from around the world um, who come in and a lot of them are Clarkson alumni or they've hired a ton of our students. Um, and it's a great opportunity to not only, you know, get an internship or co-op or if you're a senior getting a job, um, but also just getting used to networking on that professional level, walking around with your resume, um, maybe looking a little bit more professional than usual. Uh, it's just a great opportunity to get out there um, and used to it. So if your first time going to one, it's a little bit nerve wracking, you don't talk to anyone, that's okay, it gets easier. And then we also have one in the spring too. Um, that one's usually a little bit smaller just because a lot of our students have already um, you know, committed to opportunities, uh, but it is there for students. Um, and then the other two, uh, research and study abroad. So research, we are heavily involved in undergraduate research. Most of our faculty, if they are conducting research, it is with our undergraduate, excuse me, undergraduate students. Um, we have, you know, really since we are a small campus, students can just ask their professors and say, you know, what are you involved in? A lot of times they have it outside their office, um, the research that they're conducting, who's involved in it, um, what kind of funding they have for it. Um, so you can do that with faculty, but you can also get grants and scholarships to do research on your own if you'd like. Um, we also have some students who will go to other institutes and get involved in their research if there's something that interests you. Um, we're always open to getting students out there. Um, and then study abroad. We have over 55 different programs in 28 plus countries. So um, in a typical year, the show is a little bit different, um, but in a typical year, students, we get them out there. Our international center is great. Some students go based off of their major to different locations. Other students, um, it's kind of broad with the majors. Um, so you might be getting elective credits and some of your credits for your major. 
um, it just kind of depends. And we have traditional study abroad, which would be, um, you know, a full semester exchange at another institute um, abroad, uh, or we sometimes two semesters, or we have um, kind of hybrid uh, courses, which might be a couple of weeks over winter break or during uh, spring break or over the summer. Those are usually faculty led um, and actually our business uh, students, they have to do some sort of abroad experience before they graduate in order to uh, graduate and walk, um, which they love that. Um, we definitely put a heavy emphasis on international um, business, um, global supply chain uh, within the business school. Um, and then, oh, and I should say 100% um, of our students who uh, participate in a co-op were placed. Um, after graduation. Uh, and most of our students with their internships and co-ops are hired by the companies that they worked with. Um, right now, uh, I'll just kind of talk to you a little about after college. Um, so we have a 97% placement rating six months after graduation. Um, so we do a great job of getting students out there. And really, we have to applaud the Career Center and also our students um, for, you know, we, we try to bring in well-rounded students um, and work with them. And that's something that's really important to us. We would rather have a student who is, you know, high achieving, uh, but maybe like a B plus, A minus student, but a really hard worker who can carry a conversation um, rather than a student who, you know, maybe didn't try that hard. Um, so that's just kind of what we're looking for. And I think it, it shows um, in how well our students do after graduation. Um, and then resources on campus. So we have a ton of great resources. A lot of colleges do, um, you know, it's important that you go knocking on the doors of those resources though. Um, a lot of times they're not just gonna come to you. We're a small campus, we kind of can come to you and we kind of um, really encourage and uh, push you a little bit into utilizing those resources. So your first semester on campus, you will have your first year seminar. Um, within that, they're going to have a crash course in Welcome to Clarkson, um, transi transition habits and study habits and you know how to kind of make that step from high school into college and then out into uh, the real world. So that first semester, you'll take that one credit class, you'll take it with the students in your learning and living community. Um, and within that, um, you know, you're just taking, uh, like I said, the crash course. Um, but we have about 20 different learning and living communities that you can pick from. And it's just a cohort that you have some sort of common interest with, um, which is really nice. Um, but kind of going back to, that's first year, um, going back to the resource on campus. Since we are small, we are able to really encourage you. And in that first year seminar, um, different speakers from the different resources on campus and different departments will come in and they'll kind of talk to you about what there is to offer, who's there working. Um, and it kind of gets in your face a little bit more. So that's like, come see us. Um, and it's not as intimidating. I think too, because we're a small campus and we're in Northern New York, um, it's a very friendly campus too. Uh, our students really enjoy the faculty. They really enjoy the staff. Um, so hopefully if you come visit, which I think is really important, um, you kind of get to see that. Uh, so Student Success Center and Diversity and Inclusion. So we definitely want students to feel like they are um, comfortable on campus, that they are part of the campus community and that they aren't an outsider. I think all students feel like an outsider, but um, obviously, you know, that's something we don't want students to feel like. So we, the Student Success Center, great. Um, they have the tutoring center. Uh, they'll work with students, you know, maybe you're struggling in a class. Um, well, we don't want you to get too far behind. So we have group tutoring. It's a, a little bit less intimidating than one-on-one -on -one tutoring, um, and it is free to our students. It is usually guided by um, a trained upperclassman, sometimes a grad student, um, which is great. Diversity and inclusion office, like I said, we want all students to feel included in our campus. We want them all to feel like Clarkson is their home and that they are here for a reason. Um, so any student can go into the lounge, um, the DNI lounge, and kind of talk um, and work with the counselors and also just meet new people. Um, that's something that's really huge when you go to any college, uh, whether it be Clarkson or not. Office of Accessibility. Um, so if you have any additional help in high school um, or you think that you need um, help or guidance a little bit more, they will meet with you. Um, it's a great open door policy. You can kind of go in there um, and just chat with them. Uh, students, if you, are someone who thinks that uh, that's a resource that you'll use on campus, I highly encourage you to reach out to the admissions office, which I said is admissions at clarkson.edu. 
or like I said, I will drop my personal email um, in there. Um, and so, you know, make an appointment with them so that you can kind of talk about the resources that we have available. Um, first year advising, I kind of talked a little bit um, about the uh, learning and living communities, um, what's going on there. Um, and just, they're really hands-on with making sure that you are in the right major and that, um, you know, have some sort of career path. Um, it is very individualized. So they sit down with you. They are highly trained to work with you um, and make sure that it is as stressless as possible because a lot of students, you hear a lot of horror stories of, you know, getting into senior year and not having the credits. Um, this, they're gonna start mapping out that academic plan um, and then follow through with it for the next four years unless you change your major, which is totally okay. Um, and then test preparation. Um, we have a lot of great resources to help students um, for after uh, graduating and you know making those plans. Admissions. Um, so I'll just give like a brief overview about this, um, but I highly suggest if you do have specific admissions questions to email admissions at clarkson.edu or your specific admissions counselor. Um, In-house, uh, that is actually a picture of the uh, building that we work in. Um, we are admissions counselors and we are also financial aid uh, liaisons too. Um, so we can answer any questions regardless, uh, you know, if it's admissions or if it's financial aid, we're kind of the middleman for those. Um, so we accept the common application or the Clarkson specific application. We don't have a preference. So whatever you decide to do, if you're already doing the common app for all of the schools you're applying to, stick with it. If you're just applying to Clarkson, maybe you're doing early decision, definitely feel free to do that as well. Um, it is usually pre-populated for students. Um, deadlines. So early decision is December 1st of this year and regular decision is January 15th of next year. Um, and, you know, early decision for us is binding. It is saying if I'm accepted to Clarkson, I'm going to come to Clarkson, um, whereas regular decision, it's I'm keeping my options open. Um, a lot of times student athletes, they kind of know where they want to go. They go early decision or students who have just fallen in love with Clarkson, um, they go early decision. Uh, definitely feel free to reach out to us if you do have questions about early decision and that deadline. Regular decision, um, like I said, January 15th, um, everything for those deadlines. So if you're applying regular decision, all of your admissions and financial aid information is due by January 15th. If you're applying early decision, everything financial aid and admissions is due December 1st. Um, so what that means is you'd wanna make sure your FAFSA is completed if you're doing that, your admissions application's done. Um, we have all of the supporting materials, but also all of our scholarships. If you are applying to any of those, you wanna make sure that those are done as well. Um, those are all online. You can kind of look at those. Um, it's under admissions, financial aid, and then uh, special scholarships and awards. So to apply to Clarkson, we need your official high school transcript sent by your high school. Um, so a lot of students send us their unofficial. We actually can't take that. So make sure that you are you know, talking to your school counselor and um, getting those things in. Uh, and then optional SAT or ACT scores. Feel free to send those in if you want to. Um, you know, we're treating it as if it's another rigorous course or, you know, something that just backs you as a student a little bit more, uh, maybe an extracurricular, uh, but it does not hurt you if you don't send those in, but feel free to if you want to. And also, if you're not sure if you should or shouldn't, um, just reach out to us. We'll give you an honest answer if it'll help you um, or not, but it definitely won't hurt you. And then at least two letters of recommendation. Um, we suggest from core teachers, um, someone who can speak to your academic ability and also your character. Anything additional could be from a coach, from an employer, from um, a family friend, maybe a teacher, like a Spanish teacher, anything like that. Um, but we do like to see those two recommendations from the core teachers um, or actually a school counselor too. Um, those are always good. Uh, you're automatically considered for a lot of our merit-based scholarships. So like I said, some of the scholarships you do have to apply for separately. A lot of them um, are considered based off of your admissions application. Um, and then, like I said, we have those separate ones, uh, the special scholarships. 90% um, of our students receive some sort of um, financial aid or aid from Clarkson. Um, so that's always nice too. Um, we are optional for the FAFSA. So if you wanna send that in, you can, but you don't have to. Um, and we can talk to you about that a little bit more. 
Um, but yeah, the application opens up October 1st, which I believe is Friday. Um, I suggest getting that done and over with as soon as possible. I know a lot of families struggle with it, um, but it's a lot easier to get it done so that if you do have questions or if there are errors, we can you know, work through that and we can catch those early um, and you know, work with you on that. Um, if you don't submit the FAFSA, um, that's totally fine. But as it says, um, you wouldn't be considered for any um, federal loans, whether it be student or parent, um, and it would you wouldn't be considered for any grants um, through Clarkson or um, through your state or whatever it may be. So yeah, that's a little bit of information about uh, admissions and financial aid. It does get a little bit confusing for students. I know when you're applying to you know five plus schools um, and to figure out deadlines. So definitely if I can give you any advice would be to visit schools one so that you can kind of narrow down your decision. You don't apply to too many schools, um, but also to reach out to your admissions counselor at any college, whether it's Clarkson or anywhere else, um, will help you. That's what we're here for is to answer questions. Um, same thing with families. Uh, we're always helped to help you get your student into college. And yeah, so that's about it about Clarkson. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to submit it in the Q&A box, or you can email um, Clarks, or excuse me, admissions at clarkson.edu. We also have our phone number up there, um, and you can also find your assigned admissions counselor at www.clarkson.edu. Um, and then there's some of our social media stuff. Um, our Clarkson U Admissions is a new uh, social media account, and we give tips and tricks and not tricks, but tips, um, and just kind of uh, did you knows on uh, that page. So feel free to follow us there. All right, um, so I will hand it over to Greg. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Catherine, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us tonight, hearing all about Clarkson University. When you close this window, there'll be a link for a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. We encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions. And remember, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash cache, C-A-C-H-E-T. Thank you so much. And have a great night, everyone. Thank you.